Hey what is going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and in today's video tutorial we are going to be talking about static keyword in core java programming so in the previous couple of videos we discussed about method overloading and constructor overloading and also what are constructors so if you have missed those videos you can check it out in this playlist itself now we also have theoretical tutorials on our official website that is simple snippet.tech as you can see on the screen simply go to the courses part and go to the core java part so core java programming and inside that you'll find this entire list so today we are going to be talking about java static keyword that is static variables methods class and block so just click on this link and you'll be redirected to this page and before we get into the programming part so of course we'll first discuss a little bit of theory and then move on to the programming part so make sure you watch this video till the end so that you get a complete idea let's talk a little bit about the theoretical aspect of the static keyword and where exactly it is used so the static keyword in java is primarily used for memory management and static keyword can be used in different use cases so it can be used with classes it can be used with variables it can be used with methods and blocks so we'll discuss all four of them in detail so the static keyword belongs to the class so whenever you make any of these four entities as static they belong to a class level so this means that if you make a member static let's say you make a variable static you can access it without creating any object so up until now if you've seen our video tutorials whenever we want to access the instance variable inside the class we first have to create the object and then using the dot operator we can access it right but if you make a variable inside a class static it becomes a class level variable so at that moment you don't have to use or you don't have to create an object you can directly access the static variable so this was a little bit theory about static variables and these are certain properties and characteristics of static variable so static variable can be used to refer common property of all objects so one very important thing is when you create a static variable or when you make a variable inside a class static it belongs to class right so in that case only one single copy is shared between the multiple objects of that class so say for example you have a class named q and you create a static variable inside it and you create 10 or 100 objects but all of those objects will have that same static variable and it will be only one static variable so that's where the memory management comes into picture so that's what is there written in these properties and characteristics so a single copy is shared by all instances and the static variable gets memory allocated only once in the class area at the time of class loading so even before you create the object the variable that is static is already created in the memory and static variables are initialized only once at the start of the execution and as i mentioned these variables are created before the initialization of any variable or any instance variable or any object and static variable can be directly accessed by the class name and doesn't need any object so let me show you a diagram and then we'll try to go ahead into the programming part so here's a class named cube it has its own instance variable named side so this is a normal instance variable and it also has a static variable named object count which will be keeping the track of number of objects created of this class so essentially what we are going to do is we are going to use the static variable as a counter now if you're coming from a c++ background and if you watch those videos on static variables in c++ in this on this channel so you probably must have come across the static keyword and the concept is pretty much the same so let's first move on to the programming part for static variables so quickly open up your netbeans id i have already created a project named cube so inside that i'm going to create an instance variable named inside so this is a normal variable and then i'm going to create a static variable i'm going to say static int object count okay and i'm going to assign value 0 so we just saw the theory wherein we said that the static variables are initialized only once at the beginning so this is where we are initializing it and what functionality we are going to do is we are going to use this to keep a count of number of objects created so in order to do that in the constructor what i'm going to do is i'm going to say object count plus plus now we know constructor is called every time an object is created right so every time an object is created this object count variable would be incremented right okay so let's move on to the main function and main method sorry so in that i'm going to say cube c1 is equal to new cube and i'm going to pass 5 so for that i also have to have a parameterized constructor right so i'm going to create a parameterized constructor i'm going to say int x and then i'm going to say side is equal to x okay so whatever value i pass in this will be assigned to our instance variable side and also the object count is going to be incremented in the parameterized constructor as well 
okay so first object is created c1 has its own instance variable side and it shares a common static variable object count which has now incremented to 1 because we just called the parameterized constructor so now let's try to print the values i'll say system dot out dot print ln static variable object count is and as i mentioned we do not need object to access the static variable right so we can directly access it and in order to do that we can directly say object count now the reason why we can directly say is because this main function is inside this class so it knows that object count is static and it is globally available so we don't have to use c1 dot object count because it is static let's try to save this and let's try to run this so there you go you can see in the output we have static variable object count is 1 so now what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy and paste it one more time and I'm going to create one more variable c2 and I'm going to pass some other value for the instance variable 6 and again going to print object count let's comment this out let's save this and there you go you can see object count is 2 so what exactly is happening is every time you create an object the object count value is going to be plus plus that is incremented and since c1 and c2 is sharing this object count so as i mentioned this object count is class level and it is globally shared between all the objects of the same class so no matter how many objects you create the object count value is going to be same for everyone so i hope this program is clear and the functionality here that we achieved is we used the static variable as a program counter or an object counter wherein we were counting the number of objects created to keep a track of how many objects are existing in the program so this is one way you can use this static variable and there are multiple use cases wherein static variables help a lot in memory management and all so this was just one example so now the visual representation or the diagram is pretty much clear right so object count was being shared between q c1 c2 and if you create one more c3 all of them will have the same object count with the value of 3 and they would have their individual instance variables as well okay so moving ahead what is static method in java so when a method is declared with static keyword it is known as static method pretty obvious right but then what is different between a static method and a general method so some properties and characteristics of static method are it is a method which belongs to the class again and not to the object so we don't need the object dot method name we can directly access the method itself but the difference here is the static method can only access static data which makes sense right because a static method cannot access the instance variable data that is the normal variables because they haven't even been created in the memory and then the static method would want to access it right so that's not accessible so it cannot access non-static data and a static method can only access other static methods and cannot call non-static methods again so it, which again makes sense a static method can be accessed directly by the class name and doesn't need object and then static method cannot refer to this or super keywords now these two keywords are supposed to be discussed and we'll talk about them in the further videos so let's again take an example i already have the program written here on the website so you can go check out this link i'll drop this link in the video description so let's let's try to code this functionality i'm just going to type it out because i don't want to copy paste it and i would recommend that even you don't copy paste it so idea here is to create a static int calculate cube method which would take an integer variable and return its cube so it would return x star x star x so whatever number we pass in it would return its cube right and now we've de declared it static so in the main function i can say system dot out dot print ln cube of 5 is colon plus and i can directly say calculate cube and pass 5 if i save this and try to run this there you go you got the answer cube of 5 is 125 so you can see that even by not creating any object even though we did not create any object of class cube we directly access this calculate cube function now you can also access it like this by saying cube dot calculate cube by using the class name and then the function name but since the main function is inside the class cube itself we can directly access it but then we don't need an object over here that's the whole idea of the static keyword being used along with the method so this was a quick program on java static method you can read a little bit more on theory part so coming to one important question why java main method is static so up until now you've seen that the pub main method is static right public static void main so the reason why it is static is then because we don't need an object to call the static method so if 
this method was not static jvm would have to create an object first and then call the main method right so that would lead to the problem of extra memory allocation okay moving on to static blocks in java so if you need to perform certain computations or calculations in order to initialize your static variables you can declare a static block that executed that gets executed exactly once when the class is first loaded okay so in general what a static block does is it is used to initialize the static data members and it is executed before the main method at the time of class loading so suppose you have a static data member which we want to perform certain operations on even before the main method is executed so at that moment you can have a static block and the way we create a static block is you just write the keyword static you can see it over here and inside that you just perform whatever you want so i'm just going to copy and paste this over here and you can see static block is invoked right so let's try to run this so there you go you can see in the output static block is invoked which means that even before the main method got executed that is the first statement the static block was invoked so any pre processing you want to do on the static variables you can do it in the static block so the keyword is just write down static opening and closing curly braces which is going to be the body of the static block if i just hit enter you can probably see it properly and then inside the whatever you do is going to be on static data now you cannot have non static variables over here because then again they have to be first initialized or instantiated by giving them memory and you cannot directly access them now the last or the fourth case where static keyword is used is static class in java so a class can be made static only if it is a nested class so a nested class doesn't need reference of outer class and a static class cannot access non static members of the outer class so here is an example now we don't need to get into a lot of detail about static class we probably won't be using them throughout this lecture but there are certain cases where you want to create an inner class and we haven't talked about inner class so that's why i'm not getting into a lot of detail but if you just see this program example you'll probably understand it so we have a, a outer class that is java example over here okay we have a private static string str and inside that we've written simple snippets so it's static that's why we've assigned a value at the very beginning and then we have an inner class which is called static class my nested class inside that we have a non static member public void display and then i'm going to say system dot out dot print ln str so we are accessing the outer class static string str and we are printing it in our inner class display method okay so that's that's the class part in the main function what we are doing is we are saying java example which is the outer class we are saying dot my nested class so we are creating an object of nested class so this is how you create the class or you this is how you create the object of the nested class and you say equal to java example dot my nested class and then obj dot display so this function is called right this function is called and at the print ln str is called so str is this outer string which is static so that's how the output coming so that's how we get the output simple snippets so this was a little bit about static class i and you don't need to get into a lot of theory of static class but you do need to understand the first three parts that is static variables static methods and static blocks because those are the ones that are used in most cases so go to this website go check out this article and you'll probably have other articles also we have complete c++ and we are working on java every day so that's it for this video guys i hope you like this video and hope you understood where static keyword is used in java we saw the theory as well as the practicals and if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and if you haven't yet subscribed make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video thanks for watching guys i'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial peace